And in 1925, without the knowledge we have today, knowledge that came from studying film and video, living through a tornado was very difficult indeed. There were no home movie cameras in 1925. We can only imagine what the tri-state tornado looked like, but we know it was terrifying, and we know it did not look like a tornado. It was a mile wide, wrapped in dust and debris. It killed nearly 700 people in three states. It began north-northwest of Ellington, Missouri at about one o'clock in the afternoon. Its forward speed, an average of 62 miles per hour. 11 people were killed before it crossed the Mississippi River into Illinois. In southern Illinois, 613 died. After devastating Murfreesboro and after devastating West Frankfort, the tri-state tornado killed 30 farm owners, swept away farm after farm across southeast Illinois. You see, it's very rare to have the farm owner killed by a tornado. A lot of people have died in rural areas, but very few farm owners have been killed. They are extremely weather-wise people, great observers. They had no idea what they were facing. This tornado was surrounded by a massive cloud. Its origin, unknown. Why this thing was so shrouded in debris and a rolling fog and so shrouded in cloud so as to make it invisible and unrecognizable to farmers, we don't know. But I think it was because it was a unique event, perhaps something that doesn't occur perhaps once in a thousand years. Murfreesboro, Illinois, suffered the greatest losses in the tri-state tornado. $10 million in damage, 234 dead. Frances Bauer was taking her baby's diapers off the clothesline. Oh, we were about, I'd say about four or 500 feet from where the wind was blowing. I'll never, never forget that. It wiped my mother's house off the map. Big, low, rolling wind. Oh, just looked like it was, sometimes it was going like this and sometimes it was going like this. It, oh, I don't know how them, how them clouds would mix, but it just looked like a great, big, heavy cloud. Bill Molenbrock was struggling through debris with his family. They came upon a small boy sitting in this tree. But he couldn't have gotten up there by himself, no question. He must have been blown up there, that tall. And he, he wasn't hurt. No, he couldn't have possibly climbed the tree, even though it's much smaller than it is today. But somehow he got up there. I don't know how. Dr. Molenbrock was in high school when the tornado hit. He was in the room to his right. We couldn't see. Couldn't get out of the room, of course. They pressed in there, and kids were yelling because their ears were bothering. And uh, it lasted maybe a minute and a half total. Students were buried alive in the study hall area. It was up to their friends to save them from suffocation. It was the plaster, and they no place to breathe. The air couldn't get to them, and so mouth full and nose is full, and they couldn't get their arms up to dig it out themselves. And when I got to them, we got to them. Why, one of the girls gave me her petticoat, and there was some water around there, and I did that and started to work on them. We had no indication that it would be a tornado of that dimension. I saw the great cloud over there, and I thought, well, that doesn't, I've seen that before. But that wasn't the real offender. It was the one behind us that we finally heard the roar of it. So none of us saw that. Well, I didn't know that it was a tornado. I thought it was just a bad storm. My mother said that if she hadn't had looked out the window, saw it coming, she'd have been gone with it. The tri-state tornado killed more people than any other single tornado in history. 